Okay, so let's start today's class. It's on diabetes treatment, Harrison based uh, theory we'll be looking into. And later on, Dr. Bermio will be uh, giving us some practical tips how to manage diabetes. So, just a second. Firstly, the goals of therapy. Uh, firstly, to eliminate the symptoms related to hyperglycemia. Then reduce or eliminate the long-term microvascular and macrovascular complications of diabetes. And also allow the patient to achieve as normal a lifestyle as possible. So what are the uh, guidelines for ongoing comprehensive medical care for individuals with diabetes? It includes individualized glycemic goal and therapeutic plan self-monitoring at individualized frequency of blood glucose or interstitial glucose, HVNC testing two to four times a year, lifestyle management in the care of diabetes, including diabetes, there's something called diabetes self-management, education and support, nutrition therapy, physical activity, and also psychosocial care, including evaluation for depression, anxiety, etc. It also it includes detection, prevention, or management of diabetes-related complications, including a diabetes-related eye examination, which is done annually or biannually, diabetes-related food examination, that is also one to two times a year by provider, daily by the patient, diabetes-related neuropathy examination done annually, diabetes-related kidney disease testing done annually, also manage or treat diabetes-relevant conditions, including blood pressure which is assessed two to four times a year lipid levels one to two times a year consider antiplatelet therapy with low dose aspirin also all immunizations should be given including influenza pneumococcal hepatitis coronavirus treatment goals for adults with diabetes the first table is for uh, non-pregnant adults the second is for older or high risk adults this is the treatment goals so HVNC level should be between uh, should be less than seven, and for the second group it should be kept less than eight. That should be good enough. Preprandial capillary blood glucose, eighty to one thirty milligram per deciliter in non-pregnant adults, and a little bit higher, ninety to one forty in the high risk group. Postprandial less than one eighty it should be kept, and <coughs> and in the high risk group, two hundred. This is according to the American Diabetes Association Glycemic Targets 2021. So, lifestyle management in diabetes care. The patient with type 1 or type 2 diabetes should receive education about nutrition, physical activity, psychosocial support, care of diabetes during illness, and medications to lower the glucose level. And also, as I mentioned, there's something called diabetes self-management, education, and support, which I will not be elaborating now. Medical nutrition therapy, components of optimal medical nutrition therapy should be high quality, nutrient dense with limits on carbohydrate intake required for glycemic control and weight management. The goal of medical nutrition therapy in type 1 diabetes match the carbohydrate intake both temporarily and quantitatively with the appropriate amount of penicillin, insulin. In type 2 diabetes, focus on weight loss mainly and also address the great greatly increased uh, prevalence of cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension, dyslipidemia, obesity and disease in this population. So this is the table uh, shows the nutritional recommendations for adults with diabetes. It's good for us to know this since we can educate uh, our patients regarding the same. General dietary guidelines include vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, low fat dairy products and food that is higher in fiber and lower in glycemic content. So we should know which are the food that is low in glycemic content. Optimal diet composition and eating patterns are actually not known. Fat in diet, the percentage is also not known. It should be individualized. Mediterranean style diet rich in monosaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Minimal or no trans fat consumption. Carbohydrate in diet, optimal percentage is not known be individualized, monitor carbohydrate intake in regard to calories and set limits for meals to reduce postprandial glycemia. 
avoid fructose and sucrose containing beverages and minimize consumption of food with added sugar just once yeah uh, protein in diet optimal percentage of diet is not known should be individualized other components reduce calorie and non nutritive sweetness uh, reduced calorie and non nutritive sweetness may be useful protein supplementation of vitamins antioxidants trace elements not supported by evidence though sodium intake as advice for general population physical activity the benefits cardiovascular risk reduction reduce blood pressure maintenance of muscle mass reduction in body fat weight loss in patients with diabetes the ad ada actually recommends 150 minutes per week of moderate aerobic physical activity with no gaps longer than 2 days so there should be shouldn't be a period that is longer than 2 days so resistance exercise flexibility balance training reduce sedentary behavior throughout the day are advised monitoring the level of glycemic control self monitoring of blood glucose continuous glucose monitoring that is increasingly being advised these days it utilizes a sensor or electrode to detect interstitial glucose which is in equilibrium with blood glucose but may lag behind when the blood glucose changes two approaches the interstitial glucose is detected and reported essentially continuously the sensor is in place but the glucose is only recorded when the detector is placed over the sensor or the glucose sensors are placed subcutaneously and are uh, replaced every 3 to 14 days assessment of long term glycemic control It reflects the glycemic history over the previous 2 uh, to 3 months that is hbo1c measurements of hbo1c and actual glucose levels are complementary Re recent intercurrent illnesses may impact uh, smbg or continuous glucose monitoring measurements but not the hbo1c level pharmacologic treatment of diabetes that is Firstly, uh, establishment of target level of glycemic control. Target for glycemic control, as reflected by the agency, must be individualized. Goals of therapy should be developed in consultation with the patient after considering a number of medical, social, lifestyle issues. Patient-centered approach should be followed. Important factors to consider: patient's age. For those left. ஆமிட்டிஸ் <laughs> <laughs> ability to recognize hypoglycemic symptoms presence of other medical conditions or treatments that might affect survival or the response to therapy lifestyle and occupation example possible consequences of experiencing hypoglycemia on the job level of support available from family and friends all should be taken into consideration establishment of target level of glycemic control the target hbo1c should be less than 7 appropriate to set a higher hbo1c target less than 7.5 or 8 for patients with impaired awareness of hypoglycemia more stringent glycemic control issuance less than 6 is not beneficial may be detrimental in patients with type 2 diabetes and a high risk of cardiovascular disease the care of individuals with type 2 diabetes must include attention to glycemic control the treatment of conditions associated with diabetes detection management of diabetes related complications reduction in cardiovascular risk important leading cause of mortality this is a repetition slide essential elements in comprehensive care of type 2 diabetes management of type 2 diabetes uh, this all we have actually uh, gone through so i'm not repeating so these are all the agents the various agents that are used for the treatment of type 1 or type 2 diabetes firstly bicarbonates mostly uh, the most common drug we use uh, is metformin we all know it reduces hepatic glucose production and improves the peripheral glucose utilization slightly 
activates AMP dependent protein kinase and enters the cells through organic cation transporters. There is evidence for reducing hepatic glucose production by antagonizing cy cyclic AMP generation in liver cells as well as for actions in the gut. Reduces fasting plasma glucose at insulin levels, improves the lipid profile, and promotes modest weight loss. Because of metformin's relatively slow onset of action and GI symptoms with higher doses, initial dose should be low and then escalated every one to two weeks to a maximum dose of 2,000 milligram daily. Effective as monotherapy can be used in combination with other oral agents or with insulin as well. Long-term use is associated with reduced micro and macro macrovascular complications. The major toxicity of metformin lactic acidosis is very rare and can be prevented by careful patient selection. Vitamin B12 levels are lower during metformin treatment should be monitored. Should not be used in patients with moderate renal insufficiency, GFR, any form of acidosis, unstable congestive heart failure, liver disease or severe hypoxemia. I'm not, I forgot exact GFR. I think it is less than 30. Okay. Should be discontinued in hospitalized patients. Uh, in patients who can take nothing orally. And in those receiving radiographic contrast material, insulin should be used until metformin can be restarted. An extended release form has fewer GI side effects. Coming to insulin secretagogues, agents that affect the Firstly, agents that affect the ATP-sensitive potassium channel, they stimulate insulin secretion by interacting with the ATP-sensitive potassium channel on the beta cell. Most effective in individuals with type 2 diabetes of relatively recent onset, that is less than 5 years, who have residual endogenous insulin production. So they have already got insulin. First generation sulfonylureas Chlorpropamide, tolosamide, tolbutamide have a longer half-life, a greater incidence of hypoglycemia and more frequent drug interactions. So they are no longer used. Some drugs may require more than once a day dosing. Increase insulin acutely and thus should be taken shortly before a meal. With chronic therapy, though the insulin release is more sustained. Long-term use is associated with reduced micro and macrovascular complications. Glimipride, glipicide can be given in a single daily dose and are preferred over gliburide, especially in the elderly. Repaglinide, nateglinide, mitiglinide are not sulfonylureas but also interact with the ATP sensitive potassium channel. Because of their short half life, these glinide agents are given immediately before each meal to reduce meal related glucose expressions. Longer acting ones have the potential to cause hypoglycemia especially in elderly uh, individuals, usually related to delayed meals, increased physical activity, alcohol intake or renal insufficiency. Thus, their use in individuals with significant hepatic or renal dysfunction is not advisable. For patients with CKD requiring insulin secretagogue, the shorter acting sulfonylurea, glimipride or glipicide or the glinide repaglinide may be used with caution. Weight gain, a common side effect of sulfonylurea therapy, results from the increased insulin levels and improvement in glycemic control. Some sulfonylureas have significant drug interactions with alcohol and some medications including warfarin, aspirin, ketoconazole, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors and fluconazole. Despite concerns that this agent might affect the myocardial response to ischemia and observational studies suggesting that Sulfonylurea has increased cardiovascular risk. Studies have not shown any increased cardiac mortality with gliburide or other agents in this class. Now, agents that enhance GLP-1 receptor signaling. They are called incretins. They amplify the glucose-stimulated insulin secretion. Agents that either act as GLP-1 receptor agonist or enhance the endogenous GLP-1 activity are approved for the treatment of diabetes type 2. They do not cause hypoglycemia, that is an important thing, because of the glucose-dependent nature of incretin-stimulated insulin secretion. Increased glucose-stimulated insulin secretion suppresses the glucagon and slows the gastric emptying. They do not promote weight gain. Most patients experience modest weight loss 
and have appetite suppression. Short acting GLP-1 receptor agonists are exenatide twice daily, liraglutide daily, and lixisenatide daily, mostly postprandial coverage. Long acting includes sustained release exenatide, dulaglutide, lixisenatide, semaglutide, all administered weekly, reduce both postprandial as well as fasting glucose. Daily oral semaglutide is now available that depends on gastric absorption to avoid proteolytic degradation in the small intestine. All are modified to avoid enzymatic inactivation by dipeptide peptidase, DPP4, in the circulation. Higher doses of liraglutide and semaglutide than used for glucose lowering effects are effective for weight loss therapy for obesity. Liraglutide treatment has also been associated with decreasing cardiovascular events in patients with diabetes and established cardiovascular disease and with lower rates of diabetic kidney disease. Semaglutide also has been associated with fewer cardiovascular events and reduced diabetic kidney disease, but with an increased rate of retinopathy-related complications. Dulaglutide has been associated with both a reduction in cardiovascular events and in composite microvascular retinopathy and nephropathy-related complications, primarily driven by prevention of renal events should start at a lower dose to minimize initial side effects, nausea being the limiting one. Can be used as combination therapy with metformin, sulfonylurea and thiazolidine diones. Coming to DPP-4 inhibitors, they inhibit the degradation of native GLP-1 and thus enhance the incretin effect. Promote insulin secretion in the absence of hypoglycemia or weight gain and appear to have a preferential effect on postprandial glucose. Levels of GLP-1 action in the patient are greater with the GLP-1 receptor agonist than with TPP-4 inhibitor. So they are used either alone or in combination with other agents. Reduced doses should be given to patients with renal insufficiency. Side effects include allergy, rash, hypersensitivity reactions, joint pain. Potentially increases for acute pancreatitis with GLP-1 receptor agonist. Avoid these agents in patients with pancreatic disease or with other significant risk factors for acute pancreatitis. Example, heavy alcohol use, severely elevated dry glycerides, hypercalcemia. Coming to alpha glucosidase inhibitors, they reduce postprandial hyperglycemia by delaying the glucose absorption. They do not affect glucose utilization or insulin secretion. Taken just before each meal, reduce glucose absorption by inhibiting enzyme that cleaves the oligosaccharides into simple sugars in the intestinal lumen. Initiated at a low dose with the evening meal and increased to a maximum dose over weeks to months. Major side effects, GI, are related to increased delivery of oligosaccharides to the large bowel and can be reduced by gradual upward dose titration. May increase the levels of sulfonylureas and increase incidence of hypoglycemia. Simultaneous treatment with bile acid dressings and antacids should be avoided. Should not be used in individuals with IBD, gastroparesis, creatinine more than 2 mg per deciliter. If hypoglycemia from other diabetes treatments occurs while taking these agents, patients should consume glucose because the degradation and absorption of complex carbohydrates will be retarded. Coming to thiazolidine dions, they reduce the insulin resistance by binding to the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, PPAR gamma nuclear receptor Promotes a redistribution of fat from central to peripheral. Circulating insulin levels decrease with use of the thiazolidine dions, indicating a reduction in insulin resistance. Although rosiglitazone and pioglitazone do not appear to induce the liver abnormalities seen with troglitazone, the FDA recommends measurement of LFT prior to initiating therapy. Rosy raises low density lipoprotein, high density lipoprotein, and triglycerides slightly. Pioglutazone raises HDL to a greater degree and LDL a lesser degree but lowers the triglycerides. Clinical significance of lipid changes with these agents is not known. May be difficult to ascertain because most patients with diabetes are also treated with a statin. Thiazolidine dions are associated with weight gain about 2 to 3 kg, small reduction in hematocrit and a mild increase in plasma volume. Peripheral edema and congestive heart failure more common in these individuals. Contraindicated in hepatic insufficiency or congestive heart failure 3 or 4 class, pioglitazone may be associated with an increased risk of bladder cancer. In one study, pioglitazone lowered the risk for recurrent stroke or myocardial infarction in insulin-resistant individuals. 
without diabetes who had a prior stroke or a transient ischemic attack. Coming to uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, lower the blood glucose by selectively inhibiting this co-transporter, which is expressed almost exclusively in the PCT in the kidney, inhibits glucose reabsorption, lowers renal threshold for glucose, leads to increased urinary glucose excretion. The loss of urinary glucose may promote modest weight reduction. Since these agents also impair proximal reabsorption of sodium, their use is associated with diuretic effect and a 3 to 6 milli meter mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure. Due to the increased urinary glucose, urinary genital mycotic infections are more common, both men and women, and the diuretic effect can lead to reduced intravascular volume and acutely impaired the kidney function. Inhibition of SGLD2 may lead to increased glucagon and consequently liver production of glucose and ketones. Euglycemic DKA may occur during illness or when ongoing glucosuria masks the stress-induced requirements for insulin. Should not be prescribed for patients with type 1 or pancreatogenic forms of diabetes associated with insulin deficiency. Empaglifosin or canaglifosin reduces cardiovascular events and all-cause cardiovascular mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes and established cardiovascular disease. I mean, it, it reduces cardiovascular mortality. It means all causes of cardiovascular mortality. All SGLT2 inhibitors may reduce hospitalization for constitutive heart failure. EMPA, CANA, DAPA have all been shown to reduce progression of diabetic kidney disease. That should not be initiated in patients with stage 3B CKD, that is EGFR less than 45, should not be used with stage 4 CKD, EGFR less than 30. Possible increased risk of bladder cancer with DAPA. Insulin therapy in type 2. Insulin considered as part of insulin, initial therapy in type 2. Uh, in lean individuals, we should we can give insulin or those with severe weight loss. In individuals with underlying renal or hepatic disease, we can give that precludes oral glucose lowering agents. In individuals who are hospitalized or acutely ill, we can give insulin. And insulin therapy is ultimately required by a substantial number of individuals with type 2 because of the progressive nature of the disorder and the uh, relative insulin deficiency that develops in patients with long-standing diabetes. Okay, sorry, the first three, what I meant is, when do we give insulin as initial therapy in diabetes? Those points were in lean individuals in underlying renal hepatic or in hospitalized or acutely ill. Okay, both physician and patient reluct reluctance often delay the initiation of insulin therapy, but glucose control and patient well-being are improved by insulin in patients who have not reached glycemic targets. Because endogenous insulin secretion continues and is capable of providing some coverage of mealtime caloric intake, insulin is usually initiated in a single dose of long-acting insulin. That is what we call the basal insulin, 0.1 to 0.4 units per kilogram per day, given in the evening or just before bedtime. It could be NPH, glargin, detemer or diglutin. This is very long -acting. Bedtime insulin is more effective in clinical trials than a single dose of morning insulin. Because fasting hyperglycemia and increased hepatic glucose production are prominent features of type 2. Glargin given at bedtime has less nocturnal hyperglycemia than NPH. Some physicians prefer a relatively low fixed starting dose of long-acting insulin that is 5 to 15 units or a weight-based dose of 0.1 units per kilogram. The insulin dose may then be adjusted in 10 to 20 percent increments as dictated by self-monitoring of blood glucose results. Initially, basal insulin may be sufficient, but often prandial insulin coverage with multiple insulin injections is needed as diabetes progresses. Other insulin formulations that have a combination of short-acting and long-acting insulin are sometimes used in patients with diabetes because of convenience, but do not allow independent adjustment of short-acting, long-acting insulin dose and often do not achieve the same degree of glycemic control as basal or bolus regimens. In selected patients, with insulin deficient type 2 diabetes, insulin infusion devices may be considered. These are the pro insulins that are used short acting include Aspart, Lulacin, Lispro, leg regular uh, inhaled human insulin. Long acting is Digludec, Detemer, Glargin, NPH. Actually, there's another classification. Uh, I think very, uh, very long acting is Digludec. And under long-acting comes Detemer and Glargin. 
and intermediate act acting is NPHI. And the short acting ones also there is a. Uh, I think there is a further classification. I'm not very really sure. So should I continue? Five more slides. Yeah, continue. Choice of initial glucose lowering agent. The level of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and the patient's individualized goal should influence the initial choice of therapy. Patients with mild hyperglycemia, 126 to 199, that is almost 200. Your meeting will end in 10 minutes. So I'll quickly finish this and then we'll restart with the next. Patient with mild hyperglycemia now often respond well to a single oral glucose lowering agent. Those with moderate hyperglycemia, 200 to 50 will usually require more than one oral agent or insulin. Patients with more severe hyperglycemia, uh, about 250 may respond partially but are unlikely to achieve normal glycemia with oral therapy. Insulin can be used as initial therapy in individuals with severe hyperglycemia, 250 to 300 or in those who are <coughs> symptomatic from the hyperglycemia. This approach is based on the rationale that more rapid glycemic control will reduce the glucose toxicity to the islet cells, improve the endogenous insulin secretion, possibly allow oral glucose lowering, lowering agents to be more effective. If this occurs, the insulin may be discontinued. Insulin secretagogues, bigonides, alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, thiazolidine dions, GLP-1 receptor agonists, DBP-4 inhibitors, SGLT-2 inhibitors and insulin are approved for monotherapy of type 2 diabetes. Insulin secretagogues, bigonides, GLP, thiazolidine dions improve the glycemic control to a similar degree and are more effective than alpha glucosidase inhibitors, DPP4 and SGLT inhibitors. They begin to lower the plasma glucose immediately, whereas the glucose lowering effects of bigoinides and thiazolidine dions are delayed by weeks. Not all agents are effective in all individuals with type 2 diabetes. Bigoinides, alpha glucosidase, GLP1 agonist, DPP4, thiazolidine dions, SGLT do not directly cause hypoglycemia. Most individuals will eventually require treatment with more than one class of oral glucose lowering agents or insulin reflecting the progressive nature of type 2 diabetes. Durability of glycemic control is slightly less for sulfonylurea as compared to metformin or thiazolidine. These are some uh, points uh, to be noted while selecting uh, glucose lowering agents. Treatment algorithms by several professional societies suggest metformin as initial therapy because of its efficacy known side effect profile and low cost. Initiation of pharmacological therapy should be accompanied by an emphasis on lifestyle modification. Metformin's advantage are that it promotes wild, mild weight loss, lowers insulin levels, improves lipid profile slightly. Based on self-monitoring results and the HPNC, dose of metformin should be increased until the glycemic target is achieved or maximum dose is reached. So patients with type 2 diabetes, individualized glycemic goal, Medical nutrition therapy, increased physical activity, weight loss, plus metformin. You reassess HbA1c levels. Combination therapy, if not still controlled, you give combination therapy. You select metformin, and also, I mean, along with metformin, you select a second agent. Then you reassess HbA1c levels again. Then with metformin, you can select two other agents if still not controlled, or you can go for metformin plus insulin, and then still not controlled. I think you can add another agent. That will be a certain time. Thank you. Shall we close now and then start another meeting? Yeah, yeah. Then, only five minutes more. We'll start in a new link. Okay. Then I'll close and put a new link again. Okay, so it was a nice presentation. Okay, we'll discuss some of the practical aspects alone because diabetes as such is a huge topic and uh, it's dynamic. Whatever I say today may not be the rule tomorrow. Tomorrow the entire thing will change. And diabetes is one place where there are yearly guidelines released. American Diabetic Association releases the guidelines uh, every year. Uh, you quoted as 2021 reference, 2022 also ADA has given its guidelines. 
so next year a new guideline may come so it's all the more dynamic and another thing is uh, whatever we say as the con- contraindications or complications of efficacy it is also dynamic like uh, you have mentioned uh, somewhere that pancreatitis occurs with the dp people in the inhibitors but few studies have been conducted and uh, they are telling that uh, pancreatitis is not significantly associated with dp people so in the long run whether to use it or not to use it will be guided only by trials and the personal experience okay so it will take a long time to gather all those things whether to use it or not so today we'll be discussing only the practical aspect of how to initiate uh, treatment for a chronic type 2 diabetic we won't be discussing type 1 we, we won't be discussing a uh, emergency <clears throat> so when a patient comes as an op or a newly diagnosed diabetic patient how to start them on drugs whether to start them on insulin and how to proceed okay uh, can one of you tell me which are the drugs which can cause hypoglycemia So this will be just a random discussion initially. We'll diversify and come back to the point. Sulfonyl ureas can cause hypoglycemia. Okay. Sulfonyl ureas cause hypoglycemia. Mm. Okay. Insulin. No, drugs, yeah, drugs. Okay, insulin ah, also can be taken. Oh, <laughs> I thought OH is not. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Okay. Mm. Then... Uh, insulin causes hypoglycemia you told yeah. insulin secretagog secretinylurea causes what is the non sulfonylurea secretagog sulfonylurea secretagog glenides glenides yeah kappa glenide nati glenide yeah so this causes hypoglycemia this uh, acarvos that is alpha glucose base inhibitor cause uh, hypoglycemia where which one they alpha glucose release inhibitors they yeah. reduce the no the postprandial don't cause hypoglycemia they can cause hypoglycemia by preventing absorption of glucose hmm. okay so if the patient takes an adequate meal it won't be a problem if they take a small meal then again they will uh, it will lead to postprandial hypoglycemia okay So why I asked this question initially is hypoglycemia has been a part and parcel of the complication of treatment of diabetes, be it insulin okay. or uh, the long term uh, sulfonyl urea, whatever it is. Yes. But now the recent trend is, and hypoglycemia is one of the important complications of diabetes as well as its treatment. Okay. Hyperglycemia can be tolerated to some extent because. patient with a sugar of 500 they will they won't be symptomatic for a longer time mm. only when the time they develop abdominal pain or vomiting they come to the hospital we diagnose as diabetic ketosis and we treat them it is highly treatable in pain mm. whereas hypoglycemia is not so yeah it's just a sudden death so that is why when you read any guideline in diabetes everything will be explaining one fact that our treatment goals our hba1c goal and all our uh, drugs and should be targeted to prevent hypoglycemia and the induced okay. that is the same reason why high risk individuals have a higher target hba1c that is okay. presented yeah. 7 7 is the target for general yes. target whereas uh, 8 is the target for high high risk individuals oh, okay. here high risk means Uh, people who are more prone for hypoglycemia old age liver diseases chronic kidney diseases <coughs> bedridden people okay and uh, likewise the fbs target and tpbs target also same thing like 80 to 130 in normal risk there yes. is a little higher age 100 to 140 in the high risk group high risk postprandial up to 180 in normal risk up to 200 in 200 in the high risk high risk so you re- you you can remember one case which came last week to the op you know i kept 160 as the target and was yeah. talking about medicine. yeah 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 because of this he was 
she was a very old age person mm. so fasting was the one which can monitor which they can monitor so i kept the fasting in the range of uh, nice. uh, higher range 160 yeah so that is the basis behind okay so that they do not go for hypoglycemia mm. okay this is our target but our okay. calculations always go around so it is better to have a completely new system or completely new drug which avoids hypoglycemia okay right that yeah. system is called uh, incretin based therapy so what okay. do you understand by this incretin based therapy incretin based therapy uh, there be uh, incretins i mean it is will be based on incretin incretin uh, is it to what is an incretin incretin uh, is a something like substrate which amplify the insulin secretion glucose glucagon is not an incretin hmm. like glucagon like substrates which is some which is yeah. stimulate the insulin yeah. secretion one yeah any substance which increases insulin secretion is called as an incretin incretin yeah what are the incretin seen you know of glp so, like protagonist the most simplest incretin vasoactive in the same substrate glucose is the simplest incretin glucose yeah 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 glucose is causing insulin yeah secretion yeah. it is the simplest incretin yeah then amino acids okay leucine okay. arginine these okay. simple amino acids are incretins okay some free fatty acids are uh, incretins okay so which means that we can give neutrocyticals to increase insulin right yeah sounds like <laughs> so some preparations have come i cannot oh. say the name here okay they contain this uh, essential amino acids and free fatty acids mm-hmm. so logically speaking giving them is a physiological way of increasing insulin secretion mm-hmm. but we have another good system which is the glp glucagon like peptide one okay so why this is important is mm-hmm. the incretin based therapy is physiological so you know the thing right so yes glp the to level the inc- to utilize this system we have to give a glp1 receptor agonist or we have to prevent the degradation of glp1 by giving a dpp4 inhibitor both are nearly the same thing. yes yeah so the, so these two are the glp1 receptor agonist and dpp4 inhibitor are the two incretin based therapies yeah. why this is important is one it is highly physiological okay physiological in the sense we are eating after eating glp1 is getting acted we are increasing the level of glp1 that glp1 is secreting insulin but now since this is physiological glp1 not only increases insulin it stimulates the insulin antagonist glucagon also and it re- increases satiety it reduces okay. the gastric motility so it promotes weight loss okay so the advantages of using incretin based therapy is one it is physiological so there is no possibility of hypoglycemia you eat okay. you develop glp1 you have insulin the okay. next thing is promotes weight loss okay. so because of this physiological reason only it is gaining so much of popularity okay but if you see it in history glp1 receptor agonist liraglutide exenatide mm. all these are only injectable drugs okay semaglutide was injectable it's a weekly now it is last year it became it's oral oh. now it's oral no. you know the cost of the oral drug no it is costlier than all the existing drugs for diabetes the oh, cost is very very high Ooh. yeah because it yeah. was created with a new technology Ooh. to prevent uh, gastric digestion okay good 
trials uh, step 5 and step 6 government trials are conducted the step 5 and step 6 proved that oral semaglutide is very good okay it's since it causes weight loss it is used not only as an anti diabetic drug it is promoted as a stand alone drug for obesity yeah okay so there are only five fda approved drugs for obesity yeah. in india we have only two yeah. one is orlistat yeah. and now the semaglutide oral semaglutide okay okay so whatever it is for a diabetic patient if you start uh, glp1 receptor agonist either in the form of uh, injection or in the form of a oral tablet semaglutide if he is affordable it promotes his weight loss in him it reduces hypoglycemia so it does good thing. okay okay dpp4 inhibitor again the same mechanism but it is easily available as cheaper alternative hmm. the so called gliptin citagliptin vildagliptin hmm. You can read the doses. Everything comes around the fifty to hundred milligrams. Vildagliptin okay. hundred milligrams, citagliptin fifty milligrams, some somewhat like that. Okay. The same benefits. But the thing is, sax saxagliptin when it came initially, mm. there was a talk that it increases uh, heart failure. Okay. So later, they stopped using it in heart failure. Mm. now again trials have shown that it is only saxagliptin and linagliptin will cause that the, all the other drugs are safe for being there so okay. that's what i told the evidence keeps changing hmm. it depends upon your experience whether a patient develops heart failure or not okay i am telling only the positive effects of all the drugs we'll discuss side effects of that later hmm. sure okay so so we have discussed about uh, hypoglycemic risk hmm. the importance of glp1 system and how does it avoid hypoglycemia in the body it's an important system mm. so what are the drugs uh, what are oral hypoglycemic or what are the anti diabetic drugs which cause weight gain and which are the things cause weight loss mm. metformin causes weight loss metformin is weight neutral metformin weight neutral ya yeah, na no, weight neutral or mild weight loss mild weight loss hmm. mild weight loss. weight neutral to a mild weight loss yeah. weight gain uh, thiazolidine dione's will cause weight gain sulfonyl urea okay sulfonyl urea why sulfonyl urea causes a weight gain Sulfonylurea increases fatigue. Insulin is the only anabolic hormone. Sulfonylurea increases insulin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The weight gain and or another increase insulin levels, so weight gain is okay. Then uh, even incretins also will amplify insulin secretion. Just yes, now, just now, I told incretins cause weight loss. Yeah, it causes weight loss. That's what I'm saying. Weight loss. Yeah. That is the prime difference between uh, injectable insulin and injectable GR GLP-1 receptor agonist. Oh, okay. okay. For a person who is in weight loss, mm. if he needs an injectable, we have to start them on insulin. Oh, okay. Whereas a person with uncontrolled diabetes with mm. three oral anti-diabetic agents mm. who is gaining weight, we have to start them on GLP-1 receptor agonist. Okay. Understood the point. Yeah. When to start insulin mm. in? Uh, okay, I'll tell the indications for starting insulin shortly. Mm. Before that, a person who has failed three oral anti-diabetic drugs, mm. if he is losing weight, if he is in a catabolic state, we have to start insulin. Mm. If he is gaining weight, we have to start on GLP-1 receptor agonist. Okay. Now tell sure. me what are the indications of initiating insulin? <laughs> Are indications of insulin in type two diabetes? Particularly ill patients. Okay, one. 
So critically ill uh, patient. Daniel has described it in one slide because yeah. any patient who comes to the hospital will be taking so many drugs. Their metabolism will be altered. They yeah. are at risk of hypoglycemia. Hmm. They are at risk of lactic acidosis. So we cannot put them into the risk of lactic acidosis, hypoglycemia, and continue drugs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. better for all patients who are critically ill, we can continue yeah. insulin till yeah. they be become clinically better. Then we can change. Okay. One indication is critically ill patients. Then lean individuals with severe weight loss. Yeah, that's what we discussed. Yes. Diabetes with cachexia. Yeah. Insulin may be initiated as the first therapy itself. Okay. Next. Next will be uh, hepatic renal disease. Okay, patients at risk of hypoglycemia. The same thing. We cannot put them on drugs. Okay. Hepatic disease. Patients with the uncontrolled. Uncontrolled. The uncontrolled. Is a diabetes medicine. Uncontrolled sugar. So okay. Okay. About three or four. Uncontrolled sugar. Uh, it comes as two points. One is patient is taking three oral hypoglycemic agents, so, not controlled with the three means it is an indication to add on insulin. Okay. Another indication can be taken separately. Any point if the sugar crosses three hundred, mean blood glucose crosses three hundred, is an indication to add on okay. insulin. Okay. Add on insulin or to initiate insulin. If the okay. person comes to the clinic for the first time with a sugar of 350, it mm. straight away come, becomes an indication for insulin. Okay. In one slide, I had said a cutoff of uh, 250 to 300. As, 250. Uh, FDA uh, guidelines is 300. 300. Okay. okay. What's the HBA on C cutoff? Nine as per ADA, ten as per okay. RSSDA. Nine as per ADA and ten as per RSSDA Indian guidelines. So the HbA1c is more than ten. Again, we have to add on insulin or initiate insulin if they come at first. Okay. Then most important thing. Hmm. Diabetes What? with end organ damage. Oh yeah. That is. I already said that. Complications. Hepatic renal dysfunction. Diabetes related complications. Okay. Neuropathy. Okay. Sure, sure. okay. So, can you repeat the indications for insulin in diabetes? Yes. Type diabetes. diabetes with cachexia, critically ill mm-hmm. patients, not controlled with three OHAs. You have to add on insulin. Mean blood mm-hmm. glucose more than three hundred. You have to add on HbA1c nine mm-hmm. according to ADA and more than ten according mm-hmm. to Indian guidelines. Diabetes mm-hmm. with end organ damage. Mm-hmm. One more, you said. Okay, that's all. That's all. HbA1c yes. more than ten, I told. Yeah, that's right. Sugar right. more than three hundred. Failed to three a diabetes. Yeah, that also. Okay. 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 Continue with the other oral drugs. So we are discussing the drugs which cause weight gain. Mm. Insulin, sulfonylureas, mm. pioglitazone causes weight gain. Yeah. Glenates cause weight gain because it is also an insulin secretor. Okay. Drugs which cause weight loss: GLP-1 receptor agonist, mm. DPPP-4 inhibitor, mm. metformin, weight neutral or whatever. Okay. Dapagliflozin causes weight loss. Am I right? Dapagliflozin. Yeah. Because it has uh, it, uh, moderate weight reduction now. Right? The loss of urinary glucose. Okay, so first I told you the drugs which cause hypoglycemia, drugs which do not cause hypoglycemia among all these. Second, I told you about the drugs which cause weight gain, the drugs which cause weight loss. Mm-hmm. Third thing, drugs which can be given in CKD, which should not be given in CKD, which are the drugs which are contraindicated in CKD. Okay. Again, I tell you, insulin is the drug of choice. Yes. But which are the oral anti-diabetic drugs which should not be given in CKD? Metformin. Below what you should not give? 
That I'm not sure. I wanted to ask you. 30, I think. Metformin dose should be reduced to half hmm. if the EGFR is less than 45. Okay. EGFR less than 45, CKD stage 3B. Okay. Less than 30, metformin is contraindicated. Oh, less than 30, metformin is contraindicated. Yeah. So, patient with uh, creatinine 3 will mostly come under CKD stage 4 only. If you use the CKD equation and calculate, oh. if they come under CKD stage 4, they should not be, they should, <coughs> they should not be on uh, metformin. The same two cutoffs hold good for dapagliflozin also. Mm. Dapagliflozin should not be initiated when EGFR is less than 45 and should not be continued when EGFR is less than 30. If a patient is already taking dapagliflozin for a longer time, if the EGFR is less than 45, you can continue. But less than 30, you should stop everything. But it should not be started if less for than 45. Time, right? It should not be initiated if it is less than 45. It should not be initiated if it is less than 45. Yeah. Okay. So how many signs also like that? Sorry? Metformin is also like that. Now. Metformin can be started as a half dose. Half dose meaning? Uh, half dose is the maximum dose of metformin is uh, 1000. Okay. The minimum effective dose is 500 milligrams. Okay. So, for example, if you are planning to start 500 BD, mm. you have to start only as 500 OD initially. And you should never increase beyond 500 BD. That is the maximum. Okay. Okay. For other people, you can give as 1000 BD. Okay. If GFR them, is less than? Maximum 1000 milligram per day. If GFR is less than? GFR is less than 45. Okay. Maximum dose is 1000 milligram per day. GFR less than 30 should never be. Okay. Again, among gliptins, few are renal safe, few cannot be given. Okay. Practically, any drug should not be given when EGFR is less than 30. That's the thing. But at least remember these two drugs. Okay. So the other gliptins are all we can do. The pizza, like linagliptin is safe. Linagliptin is safe. Okay. And so they say few gliptins are safe. Okay. So Ultagliptin, ultagliptin, we should not continue. Okay. In short, the best thing is if they go for a renal failure, we can put them on insulin because straight mm. away they are at high risk of hypoglycemia. So mm. why to load them with drugs and increase the thing? Better, we can go for insulin. And that's an indication for insulin too. Okay. Okay, so these are the three questions which you should always have in mind. Drugs at risk of hypoglycemia, drugs causing weight gain or weight loss, and renal failure and uh, drugs. Okay, now mm. initiating metformin because all guidelines say metformin is the first drug to be started for a neutral diagnosed diabetic. Okay. Next step to the meal plan. Yeah. Medical nutrition therapy initially. Yeah. But if HbA1c is more than 7, definitely you have to start them on drugs. The okay. first drug is metformin as per all the guidelines. Okay. There should be no doubt. At because yes. if you read reference articles, if you attend conferences, if you read the textbooks, they will be giving a bland yeah. statement that sulfonylurea, metformin, DPP-4 inhibitors, all can be used as standalone drugs for initiation of diabetes. Yeah. All, all can be used. Okay. If you want to try new things, you can try. But for a more practical purposes, the time-proven evidence and standard guidelines recommend the first drug to be started in any diabetic is metformin. Okay, so what's the dose of metformin? Minimum 500 milligrams per day to maximum okay. 2,000 milligrams per day. Okay. What is the mechanism of action of metformin? Metformin it uh, decreases the hepatic glucose production. When is the hepatic Hello, glucose production maximum? 
multiple mechanics under yeah lot of mechanics it reduces yeah, lot of mechanics uh, but it decreases glucose formation group like glucose analysis is decreased pardon okay then, then before proceeding with this question i'll ask yet another question to sirdos what is de fransos uh, ominous octet are <laughs> de fransos oh. i know i studied this first One such yeah, D. D. That's the person called as D. Franco. He identified ah. eight pathogenic mm. mechanisms which occur in diabetes. That is yeah. called as D. Franco's ominous octet of octet diabetes. Octet of diabetes. Okay. Previously, so, they told only two mechanisms: mm. reduced insulin production, increased insulin resistance. Now mm. it is not so. There are eight mechanisms. So <laughs> I'll be in the line. You just uh, open the net and tell me the eight findings. I'll tell you. Just a sec. Yeah. Some. Okay. Come on. D. Franco. D. Franco. D. F. R. O. N. Is it two? How many subject? Okay. So basically, actually now you know what oh. they are saying. Hmm. Okay. Uh, basically. Uh, Think of it as G P R A B G P R A B G is for G I T mm. P is for pancreas R is mm. for renal A is for adipose tissue B is for brain. So basically, uh, the mm. eight things that come under uh, this G P R A B is one decreased insulin secretion mm. that is one component. Second, islet A cell. Okay, you stop there. I will just. Uh, uh, Hello. Yeah, first uh, one what you told uh, decreased hello? insulin secretion. Decreased insulin secretion. Indirect, indirect effect. Now what? Decreased yeah, insulin secretion. Yeah, first one is reduced insulin secretion. Yeah. Okay. Next is. Next is increased lipolysis. Okay. Next is increased glucose reabsorption. Ah, from GAT. Yeah. Then decrease glucose uptake. Hmm. Then increased uh, what is HGP? Hepatic glucose production. Eh? Sorry, hepatic that is glucose production. Uh, yeah. Increase hepatic glucose production. Then uh, islet cells in increase glucagon secretion. Okay. Then there's one more, no? Uh, neurotransmitter dysfunction. I don't know. Neurotransmitter what dysfunction. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell the importance of all this. Hmm. So to correctly treat diabetes, you have to treat these eight components. Okay. First is decreased insulin secretion in type one diabetes. That is the pathology. Hmm. But in type two diabetes, for a long period of time, the beta cells become worn out and they go for reduced insulin secretion. Okay. So to increase that, we get to give sulfonylureas, mm. glutenates, or mm. insulin itself, right? So this is addressing one component. Okay. Next is decreased incretin effect. We have mm. discussed much about incretin today. GLP one, DPP four inhibitor. Mm. So to increase the incretin effect, we are using these two. GLP one. So that is four. Okay. Yeah. Next is increased glucose reabsorption from the kidney. Okay. What drug counteracts that? SGLT two inhibitors. Yeah, done. Next okay. is uh, decrease GAT glucose. also will come. GAT learn increased reabsorption. Hmm. So what okay. counters that? A carbos. A carbos alpha glucose. Okay, increased hepatic glucose production. What drug counteracts that? Metformin. Biguanides. Yeah. Yeah, biguanides. Hmm. Increased glucagon secretion again. It mm. comes as the part of incretin only. I told. Remember? Yeah. If you are yeah, 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 yeah. GLP one, it increases insulin as well as glucagon. Glucagon also. Yeah. Ah. That is why there so is no hypoglycemia. So decreased glucose uptake yeah. in muscle. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, correct. So neurotransmitter dysfunction is the only thing which we haven't addressed. No drug is there till now. Okay. All the other components, I think we have. What addressed. about increased lipolysis? Uh, yeah, that also doesn't yeah. change. Actually, increased lipolysis occurs when there is decreased insulin secretion. 
so if you correct that this will get corrected okay similarly decreased glucose uptake in the muscle no that also okay. will increase if you increase the insulin sensitivity of the peripheral tissues okay. so except in neurotransmitter dysfunction everything will be addressed by drugs in different mechanisms okay. so metformin is the one which causes increased hepatic glucose production yes. why metformin is advocated as the first drug means it is said that increased hepatic glucose production is the first mechanism yes. previously i as i told you it was thought that peripheral insulin resistance is the first mechanism okay. it is not so oh okay it is not so more fat gets deposited in the liver it impairs hepatic glucose production so it increases hepatic glucose production that is the main reason of diabetes so you have to address that that is why metformin comes in the first now if you read the other process now for that ബെറ്റർ ഇതിനെ <laughs> 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 so most hmm. of these things is covered by glp1 yeah that's why it's gaining popularity mm-hmm. okay so yeah. you now you understood the mechanism why we start metformin initially hmm. okay now how to proceed with that okay so okay, we started we'll stay, with the dose of metformin 500 per day uh, or based on the hmm. uh, sugar levels we can make it to 500 bd right we can start with 500 mm. bd also right yeah 500 bd you can start okay. minimum dose is 500 maximum dose is 2000 okay uh, there is only four more minutes left shall we make another one mm. it'll continue uh, till that yeah. okay then uh, i'll discuss another question and then we'll come back to the case in the next uh, session okay 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 so now the next question to you is mm. what are the indian challenges in diabetic management indian challenge okay. to daniel okay indian challenges indian diabetics actually, have some differences yeah because indians are uh, very attached with our bellies so we have pot belly is that the problem centripetal uh-huh. obesity like me and firdos Uh, so there's a lot <laughs> there is lot of free fatty acids being formed okay. there is lot actually of... that is a separate talk by itself because mm. uh, in western literature no they have classified diabetic phenotypes mm-hmm. you can read about diabetic phenotypes for example mm. uh, one diabetic phenotype is severe insulin resistance okay. is one phenotype mm. severe autoimmune insulin deficient diabetes is one phenotype this is western literature Okay. but some 3 or 4 years ago there was no such literature available in india okay okay <laughs> so you would have heard about dr mohan right dr mohan's diabetic clinic yeah. so their yeah. team started a uh, their team led by dr anjana mohan started a research in india called as yeah. the indiab study indian diabetic study or the indiab study yeah. and they classified indian phenotypes some four okay. or five types are there i think okay in that one for example one in, uh, type is mm. thin diabetic patient thin insulin resistant diabetic patient so thin obese patients thin so, obese so a normal normal yes. bmi doesn't mean normal in india a normal yeah. bmi patient will have mm. fat deposition within in the belly so he has yeah. the fat yeah, yeah. Mm. that is called thin fat diabetes Oh, this yeah, is one such type in India. Yeah, bro, cut it all. Ah, okay. 
I think you are referring to your students. Okay. One minute left, sir. Okay. Shall we? I will discuss this and close. Okay. Time is there. Okay, so Another that is a separate that, topic, no. right? Sir. Uh, this uh, most of this new platform are very costly. So it hmm. is not affordable to most of the Indian population. Okay, one is cost affordability. Then, Scientific uh, issues, I'm asking. The, Okay. So one could be the abdominal obesity, right? Oh, yeah. The... No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Mm. I didn't expect that answer. Okay. Sorry. Mm. Okay. Less than a minute. Shall we close and restart? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. I will just put the next link. Okay. Recording stopped. Okay, so important challenges of managing diabetes in India is first thing there is a high postprandial rise in glucose because of the high carbohydrate meal we take. Okay, so you just mentioned that increased hepatic glucose production is the first mechanism, but increased hepatic glucose production should cause a higher passing blood glucose. Hmm. That, that, that is why metformin is the universal standard. It is okay. the earliest mechanism, obviously. But still in India, postprandial rise is the big problem because of the meal we take. Okay. Next thing is, you would have seen many patients who come with sugar of one to, uh, two and, uh, 150, but their HB once will be 15. <laughs> yeah. Correct only. Yeah. It's a very common occurrence in India yeah. because... We cannot blame the patients. It is a phenomenon called as high glycemic variability, HGV. Okay. The same reason. Fasting is normal. They take food. Postprandial, it becomes 600. Mm. Then it becomes low. Then they take a drug, it becomes low. Again, they take a meal, it becomes high. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem of high glycemic variability. Okay. These are the two important uh, problems issues. in India, challenges in India. Yeah. So, postprandial is very important to manage. So, how can you reduce this postprandial search by giving oglibose saccharides? Alpha glucose based. Alpha glucose based inhibitor will be a better option in India. Okay. How to prevent this glycemic variability? GLP1 receptor agonist because it is physiological. Okay. RDPP4 inhibitor because it is physiological. Okay. That is why in Indian scenario, mm. giving sitagliptin, vildagliptin is a good choice. It's a good add-on drug. Okay. Okay. This is one concept. Then. Okay. okay. We'll proceed in the protocol itself. So first we have started okay. with forming. If you read the guidelines, most of the guidelines say there is no fixed second line drug which can be started. The yeah. second line drug has to be started based upon the clinical scenario. That is what ADA guidelines states. No guideline gives a clear picture that you have to start sulfonylurea or so on. So. Now, what could be the second second drug? Okay, so before going into that, two other concepts I'll tell you. One is about HbA1c reduction okay. and the importance of sulfonylurea. Two things here. Okay. Every one percent reduction in HbA1c reduces mortality by twenty one percent. Wow. Okay. So every one HbA1c is important. The thing is, when you are discussing about drug, when you are trying to initiate a drug, I told you few concepts to remember, right? Mm. Whether your weight gain is there, weight loss is there, whether risk of hypoglycemia is there, yeah. whether CKD is there, these are things yeah. I ask you to see. Yeah. This is about whether to start in the patient or not, patient selection. Mm. Then going to the next drug, we have to think about some other thing called as the efficacy. Mm. Okay, for example, yeah. among all the drugs, can you say which drug has the highest efficacy, that is highest hba one c reduction? Highest HPLC reduction. Apart from insulin. Insulin is the best, obviously. 
Is it metformin? No, sulfonyl ureas. Okay. Because sulfonyl ureas is equal to insulin. It produces insulin. Oh, yeah. The maximum mm. HPC reduction, mm. like 1.2% is with sulfonyl ureas. Okay. But it is not the first choice because of two reasons. One, it has a risk of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. Second problem yeah. is told that excess use of sulfonyl ureas can damage the pancreatic beta cells. Okay. So sulfonyl ureas in modern practice has mm. slowly started to lose its original place which had previously. Okay. In government setup, it continues to be used as still the first line drug, oh. but in private setups, it is not chosen as a first drug, obviously, okay. and it is not considered as a second line add-on drug. Okay. But there are few indications where sulfonyl urea is a drug of choice. Oh. One is neonatal diabetes. Okay. Okay, neonatal diabetes, which we will not discuss today. Another thing is Modi. Yes. Maturity onset diabetes of young. So, a young diabetic, we tend them to start them tend to start them on insulin. But how you are usually a mode is diagnosed? A young diabetic started yes. on insulin, develops frequent episodes of hypoglycemia and not tolerating insulin. Finally, change them to oral. Drug. Oh, geez, yeah. It end up, yeah, oh, So if it is a mori, glibenclamide is a drug of choice. Okay. So the two places that there is evidence to prove, evidence to use sulfonyl urea is one is neonatal diabetes mellitus, another one is Modi. Apart from this, there is no place where it's a first line choice. So, but in Indian scenario, because of the cost and the other things, still we can use. Again, as I already told you, if there are so many trials to say that sulfonyl ureas are bad, there are so many trials to say that sulfonyl ureas are good. Okay. Like one trial called this Carolina trial was done. Mm. It showed that sulfonyl urea is a fairly good drug. Okay. And it has the highest efficacy of HbA1c reduction. Okay. okay. So okay. for practical purposes, yeah. the first drug is metformin, which produces one gram percent reduction in hemoglobin. Yeah. HbA1c. Yeah. Second drug we can consider. Uh, uh, glimepiride. Glimepiride has the lowest risk of hypoglycemia. Glimepiride. Glimepiride. Okay. So, so many trade names are available that you know better than me. Okay. Glimepiride plus metformin will be a good second option, obviously. Okay. Glimepiride dose? <clears throat> and start at 1 milligram. Maximum dose is 2 milligram. Okay. Uh, OD? Like, let's say. Yeah, OD. It's a long acting, so it should be given OD, not BD. Okay. Maximum dose is 5. 2. Oh, only 2. Okay. Sure. Only 2. Glipicide comes as 5 mg, so it's starting dose is 5 mg BD. Okay. Can be given up to 40 mg, so 20, 20. Okay. 40 mg per day. Glycolestate comes as 40 mg. Again, uh, starting dose is 40 milligram once daily to glycoside. Once glycoside. Okay. 160 milligram per day it can be given. So this, okay. those limits you can refer books. Sir. The only okay. thing is you have to know how to start least dose, maximum dose, risk of yeah. those things. So we can okay. start. So this the, is one card. Second option is glyphosate can be given one milligram. Yeah. Because it has low yeah. cost chance of hypoglycemia. Yeah. So initially, metformin has one percent reduction. This has one point one percent reduction. So total reduction is two uh, two point two. Okay. It's a very good combination. Okay. Okay. Now consider other possibilities. Uh, for DTP for inhibitors, mm. glenite, pioglitazone, all these have a point eight to point nine percent reduction. Okay. Again, these are also fairly good options. So metformin plus Pioglitazone, good combination. DP4 inhibitors, sir, has 0.8 to? Around 0.8 to 0.9. It's not one, just less than one. So giving DPP4 inhibitor plus this one will have 
combined effect of 1.9 percent reduction sure that is what uh, you quoted in one slide no dp force yeah. inhibitor can be used as a stand alone drug because yeah. it has 0.9 percent reduction sure but dapagliflozin cannot be used as a stand alone drug because it will cause glycosuria only when sugar is excess yeah, for mild yeah. sugar excess it cannot act okay so the glucose reduction with sglt2 inhibitors only mm. minimal minimal minimal, minimal like yeah 0.5 yeah. percent yeah those can be used as a second line yes it can be used mm. based upon hp on okay suppose hb on c is just uh, with one drug it is 7.2 na yeah i need to bring it to 6.6 i can add sglt2 in it but okay. when the hb on c is 8 already we cannot mm. give this drug so this is how you decide new drug so patient initially had hb on c of 8 mm. okay you started them on metformin what mm. is the expected fall one one person mm. one person because our target is 7 right yeah. it's 8 Started on one drug with one drug, it has come to seven. We are going okay. in the right direction. Continue the same. Okay. Okay. Mm. If it is nine initially, okay. Two of two possibilities can be done. One. Okay. We can start them on two drugs to mm. have a reduction to seven. Okay. Right. Or okay. we can start them with one drug. Mm. We can monitor for sugar response. Mm. Then, after a particular time, you have to reassess the patient. Mm. because we are advising the meal also meal plan exercise yeah. also it, they are very strong huh? those things may yeah. have an additive effect okay. so with single drug medical nutrition therapy and exercise that nine becomes seven well and good you can continue with only one drug sure the time to reassess is three months okay three months three months any That's... change in diabetes isn't that too long we done as it no three months also. well because uh, by the time three months le Suppose the sugars are not at all controlled with suppose. I'll tell drug. you the reason why three months because HB on still tell the sugar change in the three months. Only in three months, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so HB on still change can be assessed only after three months. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because HB on still is the best target practically yeah. till now. Okay, 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 okay. Got it. Because that's what I told you in Indian scenario. Mm -hmm. Single value, like if they come to the hospital, we are doing only a random blood sugar. Oh, If they come in the morning, we are doing only fasting blood sugar. Fasting. With that two sugar values, we cannot assess the diabetic control in India because of the high glycemic variability. Yep. Yep. So we need a complete glucose picture only to monitor. That is why HB on C becomes important. Okay. Not the individual sugar values. Okay. A even better measure to measure the glycemic variability is so called as continuous C glucose monitor. CBG. Yeah. CGM. CGM. Yeah. Sorry, CGM. Uh, in continuous glucose monitoring, what we do is it comes as a graph. Mm. The total time mm. the patient is in normal range, that one forty to one eighty range, it measures. The time okay. in range should be seventy percent. Okay. You uh, put it in one slide, but you didn't explain it. Which so one? That is what is the CGM. The initial targets you are putting, you know, in that time in range seventy percent was. Oh, that I didn't understand. That's why I didn't explain. Okay, that is what. So CGM oh. measures the complete glucose profile over the seven to ten days and use it as a graph. Okay. In that graph, we have to see oh. the percentage of time in which the sugar value is within the accepted range of one forty to one eighty. Okay. If that time is seventy percent, it means the time in range. Time oh. time is in range seventy percent. Okay, okay. Suppose if it is only twenty percent, then it is very low time in range. So we okay. need an aggressive sugar control. Oh, it's like that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Now, now if you read that slide, you'll understand. So yeah. Now, what is the time? Mm. I don't understand uh, what is this time. Mm. And then, if they are not affordable for this time in range CGM monitoring, you can do multiple pricks of glucometer per day and yeah, 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 make yeah. it as a point in range, points in mm. range, mm. P A R, mm. time in range and points in range. Ten times you can do per day. If okay. seven times it is normal, right? It is. Points in range normal. Okay. What are the usual DPP for inhibitors that we start? Commonly used as citagliptin and vildagliptin. Citagliptin fifty milligram, vildagliptin hundred milligram. Fifty milligram OD. Maximum you should double. Ah. 
So we started 50 mg OD. Maximum 100. Yeah. Maximum 100. Vildagliptin can be started at 50. Maximum 100. Same dose. Same dose. Okay. But that will cost 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 reduction. 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 percent reduction. Yeah. So we had discussed about metformin plus sulfonylurea combination, metformin plus dapagliflozin combination, then metformin plus DPP4 inhibition combination, metformin plus triglyceride combination. Whatever combination, it depends on your choice, but it should be based upon the HbA1c reduction. Okay, metformin yeah, plus DAPA, reduction, we didn't discuss right. Oh, you, you didn't say the values, but you just said okay. very less. Less, less, less. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For example, initially it was 8.2. It, yeah. With the single dose metformin, it has come to 7.5. For okay. them, you can put that for glycosis. Okay. Yeah. So Especially if they have some cardiovascular renal problem. Choice. Yeah. Cardiovascular or renal problem, that can be used as an add-on drug based oh, on the clean system. Okay. 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 So I didn't tell about the clinical scenario on the particular drug. No. Dapaglyclosin yeah. is good for cardiovascular diseases and CKD. Okay. If the patient okay. is having heart failure, CAD, CKD, Dapaglyclosin is a very good add-on drug. Sure. Okay. Provided GFR is more than 30. Okay. Okay. Then okay. Uh, gliptins. Gliptins, you told. So just is just the one second. Yeah. I'm pausing. Just pausing the record just for one mm -hmm. second. Record. Uh, okay. So, gliptins, pancreatitis is the contraindication, you told. Yeah. Uh, what else is the good for gliptins? Yeah, weight, weight loss. Mm. Right. The same scenario which we discussed. So, these okay. are the indications where we prefer. Suppose if they are overweight enough, mm. metformin plus DPP4 will be a good combination. Okay. Uh, DPP4 is weight motor now. No, DPP4 causes weight loss. It is the GLP1. Increasing based therapy. Okay. And uh, some say that uh, heart failure is a contraindication for gliptins. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I told you know, saxagliptin, wildagliptin. Mm -hmm. Saxagliptin yeah, yeah, actually yeah. had some issues. Yeah. So, by that old sentiment, you can avoid using in heart failure. Heart failure, go for dapagliflozin. No heart failure, you can use gl gliptins. Okay. Provided based on the glycemic efficacy, which you have to reduce. Shit. That's all. These small, small things, if you understand, you can change. You can decide which one to start. Because so many combinations are available. Right? Okay. Okay. So this is the second step. The first step, okay. start metformin. Oh. Advice medical nutrition therapy mm. on monitor for three months. At the end of mm. three months, assess HB1C. If it mm. is reduced, okay. Mm. If it is not reduced, add a second drug mm. after the full dose is achieved. Okay. Usually, there's no problem in titrating because usually we started the near maximum dose. No. Mm. And formally, we started 500 BD, 1000. The next yeah. higher dose is 2000. So, next visit will increase to 2000. Then again, okay. three months, now, six months. So okay. titration but the titration what, what we do is that no after 500 bd we start add-on drugs 500 bd starting an add-on drugs is not a very good option you have to always go to the maximum dose of a one drug before going to the another one unless you feel that another mechanism should be targeted yeah <clears throat> for example a person comes with a hbo and c of 8.8 okay okay Okay, definitely one drug is okay, okay. not indicated in them because only metformin will reduce by 1% only. Okay. We cannot try medical nutrition therapy in them because 8 means we can bargain. One will reduce one la mm. But 8.8 .8 or 9 are bringing both the giving a medical nutrition therapy alone may not be sufficient. So he needs two drugs. Okay. Okay. Got so it. That two drugs you can decide. If you are starting two drugs, now you can start two drugs in lower dose. Metformin 500 BD plus glymethyrate 1 milligram OD can be started. Or acetagliptin 50 milligram plus uh, metformin 500 milligram BD can be started. So next visit you see. What is the expected fall now? We have started 
Citagliptin plus metformin means the next fall should be around 1.7% of HbA1c. 1.7 or 1.8? 1.7. 1.7. Okay. So, uh, 1.8. 1.8 should be fall. So from okay. 8.8, if it comes to 7, you are good. You are going in the right direction. If not, you have to double the dose. Okay, my and doubt is... value itself comes more than 10. Hmm. My, my one doubt is this reduction of HP1C, you know, you're saying 1% mm. or not, it is uh, applicable mm. for the maximum dose of that drug, right? Yeah. If you give the maximum dose of metformin, that is 2000 per day, you expect 1% mm. reduction. Is it like that? Not the maximum. It depends on the responsiveness of the patient. Okay. The maximum HP1C reduction which can be achieved with a particular drug is this one. Some it's achieve like it that. with a lower doses, some achieve it with higher doses. It oh, is not okay. the maximum got dose. Okay, got the it. Maximum got it. achievable HB1C reduction. The reduction is this with this particular drug. Okay. okay. So second uh, uh, done. Again, after three months, you can add the third drug. Okay. So three, three, three. One for titration we can take. So maximum by one year, hmm. we can understand whether we are tolerating three drugs or not. Okay. Beyond one year, failure of three OHS, add on insulin. Okay. Beyond one year. But if you add insulin, we cannot give insulin secretors off. It increases the risk of hypoglycemia. In that case, you have to reduce the dose of sulfonylurea and glimax. Can you say that again, sir? Yeah, after failure of three oral anti-diabetic anti drugs, okay. we are going to start a patient on insulin. Hmm. Insulin causes two side effects. Hmm. Weight gain, Hi hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. So we have to reduce the drugs which cause weight gain and hypoglycemia. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So putting a person on, okay, putting a person on pyoglitazone, plus metformin, mm. plus a sulfonylurea, plus insulin, mm. causes so much of weight gain and so much of hypoglycemia. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. So in that case, you can stop pyoglutazone and change to mm. dapagliflozin or uh, citagliptin like that. Okay, okay. Got it. It's just a basic knowledge of mm. physiology. Okay. So this is a about uh, basic titration. So shall we continue insulin today itself or shall we have it as another class? Because insulin itself will take on that. I think we can have a fresh mind and discuss <laughs> insulin another day. That will be maybe maybe tomorrow you, we can go. You discussed mm -hmm. insulin today. Yeah. Tomorrow shall we continue then? Yeah. Okay, okay. Tomorrow you have duty, no? Uh, tomorrow I have duty. Uh then maybe... duty today. No, not OP duty. Well, I see duty. I see duty. will be difficult. Yeah. So we can maybe do it on Saturday if you are free. Saturday, I think I won't be free. Saturday, we'll have it a plus or minus. Okay, okay. Okay, you can have your Because insulin has different steps. This is easy. This is insulin is what you really want. In the hospital, mm. what we face is insulin crisis of management. Mm. Okay, yeah. so That's maybe we need... want it as a separate one because oh. insulin, the yeah. steps are one thing you should know which type of insulin you are telling. No, the types of insulin very okay. short acting, short yeah. acting, yeah, yeah, intermediate acting, long acting, very long acting. You should know what's yeah. the time of onset, duration of action. You should know. The yeah. preparations you should know, the mixture yeah. combinations you should know, co formulations you should know. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Then, what is the dose to start? Initiation you should know. How to intensify? Intensification okay. should be done every two days. Okay. Okay. For after starting a OHA, we have to do the next measurement only after three months. Yeah. Okay. But for insulin, it is not so. Every two days, you have to ask the patient to come and you have to look at the insulin. Okay. Then that is titration, whether mm -hmm. the sugars are controlled. Then after three months, you have to come again and see the HbA1c, okay. whether long term it is controlled or not. 
So mm. if it is not controlled, you have to intensify insulin. Mm. Okay, initiation, titration, intensification. Mm. Then in between some problems will be there, counting insulin. Mm. Suppose if they take an excess meal, if they skip a meal, if they do exercise, mm. like that's so many. That can be another class, I think. Yeah. We'll first mainly make OHS thorough. Okay, can you do those? Any doubts you can ask. Fir dos. Yes, yes. Why don't you summarize today? Summarize, okay. Yeah, summarize okay. in the following thing. So, what are the OHS which cause weight loss, weight gain? CKD can can be given, uh, should not be given in CKD. Uh, hypoglycemia, no hypoglycemic risk. Glycemic efficacy of each. First drug to start, mechanism of action. Uh, second drug, what are the possibilities? What are the advantages, disadvantages? How to proceed and how to follow. That's the practical. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so I have to summarize it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, OHS. I gave you the hint also. also. Yeah, he uh, told the order. OHS was a topic of our day. So, the most common OHS we use in our clinical practices are uh, big one is like metformin, then sulfonyl ureas, then thio solders, so retinones, then meglitinates, then TLP1 analogs, PPP4 blockers, then uh, frosings, then alpha glucosidase inhibitors. So, coming to big one, it's metformin. Is the most and alpha glucose base, I didn't tell you the efficacy, you know. Yeah. It is, it is also not a very powerful drug. The thing is, it reduces postprandial glucose. For India, it is good. Okay. But as a standalone drug, it is not used. But okay. along with other drugs only, it has to be used. And it has okay. very, very low uh, reduction for efficacy, like 0.4%. Oh, yeah. So only to reduce the postprandial sugar. If a PP base is high for the person, you can use more glucose. Okay. Continue. So, continue. <laughs> is like common. So, so, mainly weight neutral or cause mild to weight loss. It acts by different mechanisms as we have said earlier. Then, coming to sulfonyl ureas, Ah, so we so we so we can uh, start with five hundred milligram twice daily, and if patient is having CPD and all, uh, it is less than thirty. We are more than less than thirty. We should not start metformin, and we are more than less than forty five. We can give up to a maximum dose of one gram per day. Then coming to sulfonyl ureas, uh, they cause weight gain and are notorious to cause hypoglycemia and all. And uh, even the benzlamide is used in, I used to say, first line drug in neonatal hyperglycemia and all. Then coming to for blockers, uh, it is not safe in renal failure other than linagliptin and it causes weight uh, loss. Then coming to flossings, I will say SDLP2 blockers, they promote glucose saturation and may, the most common that we use in the patient practice is the fibrosis. It is indicated in heart failure patients. Yeah. Then it's called weight loss property and coming to TLP1 analogs. They are injectable drugs with weight loss weight loss in property. So that was the class OAK. So we will continue on this day. Okay. Insulin. You didn't say what uh, Dharmio sir taught. That we'll stop, say, after recording. I think. Stop. We'll stop recording.
Yes, yes, yes. It is getting too long. 